Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's uh, come a bit of a shock, is it, to you, this having to work for a, for a while? No? No, not too much. No, really. And there's obviously no job going, that's for sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, now, today's task was all about whether you can sell on TV, whether you could actually sell on TV. Because in my experience of being involved in this uh, media stuff, I tend to find people who want to take the credit for the successes and tend to kind of hide in the bushes for their failures. Like Jana, for example, here, I mean, responsible for Comic Relief, Fame Academy, Doctor Who, Jonathan Ross, Planet Earth, Strictly Come Dancing, and The Apprentice. But where's Davina? On here, I, I'm, I'm, I'm missing, missing. What are you laughing at? Well, I mean, the fact you've I mean, you know, the fact you've got to the No, I mean, I mean, you're responsible for making McKenna. I can make you thin. I mean, for, God, for God's sake, really. I mean, you've got most of a variety of programs. No, not really. Sophie, you're a negotiator, aren't you? That's I am. A, for Sky at the moment. You buy all those. All, you don't buy the football, do you? No. I mean, really, they got much else other than the football, have they? That lot. Hmm. So, chaps, in the negotiation, you got the iron. No, the vacuum, vacuum cleaner, cleaner and, and the earrings. Is okay, that what you wanted? No, we, we wanted the sandals. The sandals were our number one item. We also wanted the vacuum, which turned out to be a bit of a dud on reflection. I'm not sure um, it was a dud. Well, I mean, I watched well, you. It, have, you done any, have you done any hoovering at home? Well, not recently. You was moving it around like, the, like something from well, Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, 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 like a bloody metal <laughs> detector. You obviously well, never seen anybody vacuuming Well, I couldn't before. work the... Hadn't the, been watching your cleaner, perhaps. Well, no, the mechanic... The, we, we, we had the vacuum whisked... <laughs> we had the va vacuum whisked away, and... And so we, I didn't know what the mechanism was You made a bloody mess, do. didn't you, with that vacuum cleaner? It was, it was a bit <laughs> embarrassing. And you want, I wonder how many you sold. So you picked your, um... You picked your products, and um, you put these two troops forward. So what would you send Peter down there for then? We just thought that um, Peter would be more likely to sell to well, that if, audience than I was. We felt that... You mean like he's going to be a bit more like a QVC brand yeah. dead consumer? Yeah. <laughs> right, yes. Um, so you're feeling quietly confident there, are you? Well, we think we had the right sort of flow of products, and we thought that mix was... We're Shall done. we get on to the money, folks, yeah? Uh -huh. So, um, let's go. Margaret, let me know, how did the boys do? Well, the boys' team sold a total value of £1,790. Right. And Nick? Well, the girls generated sales of £4,653. <laughs> <laughs> mm. There you go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay, ladies. Well, very well done. Thanks a lot for um, coming along and doing the task. Um, off you go. Thanks Thank so you very much, Thank you. Thank you. Yes! <laughs> well, gentlemen, those ladies really kicked your ass, didn't they? Yep. Is that what goes on in the TV business also? Everywhere, I mean, the thing that interests me quite a lot when I got involved in this, all this apprentice stuff was how many ladies are in senior positions in this industry? Completely different to, uh, to mine. Is, is this a glowing example as to why? Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. they were some of the Ooh, finest, just, yeah. finest women in television we were up against. Really? So come on, chaps, aftermath here. Aftermath here, because one of you is going to get fired. Who, who, the wrong products. Who's responsible for the wrong products? Who would you say is responsible? Come on, speak up now. You well, I think we're all responsible. We... Who's this we? It's proverbial we. I can see you've been in big... I can see you've been in big companies for a long time. Hey, have you got a bloody great big cardboard thing up your ass there protecting yourself? Who's this we? Come on, speak up now. I want to know who's responsible. Well, I, I made the decisions in the end. Because Ultimately, I did, because I did you were the team leader. Yeah, yeah but, And we decided... But you're not an expert I... on vacuum cleaners, are you? No. I wasn't actually, but I, I actually think each of the team brought some strengths to it. We, we, you know, oh, we know that we chose like the wrong thing. It's like a broken, bloody, re like a broken bloody record. You're like a broken record, a lot of you. There was Simon, a disagreement. imagine you're going to use your permanent slot in the Ivy. Okay, think about it. Who's responsible out of all this lot here? That's life or death now. Your okay, Ivy, think, your I Ivy think, table's I going. Think we made a set of decisions around the negotiation, which arguably 
set us in the wrong direction. Or this has got so to be, a, be a first. This has got okay, to be a so first. the negotiation was part of it, this but the product selection was also part of it. You got, this has got to be a first. You've got representatives of Channel 4, BBC, ITV people, and independents there, and they're all agreeing with each other, all supporting each other, and all stabbing each other in the back at the moment. This moment, this snapshot in time, take this. It's lovely, take isn't this, it? Take this thing in snapshot in time, because it'll be the only time anybody will ever see it again. <laughs> okay? So, I'm going to ask you now, who do you think should be let go? I suppose if I had to, to say who could go home first, I'd probably say uh, Andrew. OK, gentlemen, well, if you'll all retire outside. Andrew, haven't had much to say to you. You've got away with bloody murder. You've kept quiet all the time here, you've not said a word, you haven't, you haven't come forward at all and he's let you off the bloody hook. But most I, wanted to get I would imagine most people in Channel 4 would say, exactly, this is exactly what goes on every single day, every single day this is what happens and he's lucky again it's happened to him again. Off you go. It seems to me that these three people are not prepared to criticise each other and that's the difficulty of what went on so I've got to rely quite a lot on you really. One of the things they were all very bad at actually was time. You'd think in that business they would be aware that if somebody's got to do something for three minutes or five minutes they have no sense of how long three minutes or but five minutes But do you think is. the people in the gallery were responsible partly for the poor performance of the presenters because they weren't feeding them the right information at the right time? That is quite possible. I think Andy certainly did a much better job in the audition than he actually did mm. on the But it wasn't live. too bad. I found Andy wasn't too bad. He was quite smooth. Mm. Mm. He was quite smooth. I just found that that is like he was the magician and, and Peter was like the stooge, if you like. All right, I think we should call them back in. OK, can you send the three gentlemen in, please? Thank you. Well, what we've got to decide now, what I've got to decide now, is which one of you is going to get fired. Peter, you should, with all the years of experience you've had in television, done a bit better, I think, in front of the cameras. You were poor in rehearsals, and with respect, you were poor on the shop floor. And that bothers me, because I've got a feeling that someone's stitching you up here. You may have been better off up there in the gantry and, and directing. So, who made the decision ultimately? Did you feel you got railroaded into actually being a presenter? Oh, well, I think the, I, I went along with the consensus from the team. It wasn't one individual or another. Is that what but you do in this TV like... industry, go along with what the team thinks? Doesn't anybody ever make a decision themselves or, or be decisive or, or, or what? Well, we did to some extent. I mean, we did, we did make decisions, but it was, um, it was well, based... I'm it was, ba it was based on also some of the kind of collective wisdom and experience of the people in the team. Well, you're leading me, you know, Peter, down uh, a, a kind of a road which gives me only one alternative, and that is you're the team leader, you're the boss, so you're the one responsible, uh, you know, because I'm not hearing anything else. But do you, again, think, we do you think the floor the was the danger zone, the killing field? Do you think presenting was the most dangerous place to be? I think uh, the product selection was a hugely risky area. And to be candid with you, my assumption is once the product selection choices had been made, then presenting was not the fundamental choice. Presenting was part of the problem, but the fundamental choice was we had a very high ticket item but you didn't were work of, on you, you, screen. But you that were, didn't work on screen. You were part of the product selection process. Yeah, no, you, I agree. I agree. And, I, although we didn't, as you know, and no end one up. here out of the three of you is taking any is taking responsibility for it. It's this committee. Well, very very difficult decision here. Really, I'm looking. You know, I'm trying to. I'm struggling to understand where the responsibility lays. One of you, as you know, has got to be labelled with being fired. So, anybody got anything to say? Why shouldn't I fire you? Well, because I hate that I came along today and tried a new task and gave it my best efforts and did myself reasonable justice. So, I feel as though I've 
done, performed to the best of my abilities, and I don't want to be fired. And Peter, why well, shouldn't well, I fire I, you? I, took, I came along, I took responsibility. Um, I tried to lead a strong team. Um, we, it didn't work out. And, uh, but isn't that in business normally that the person, the boss, the CEO, if he fails, is responsible? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm broadly speaking happy with that. I'm just saying that I, well, I came along did my... You're well, a bit of a defeatist. No, well, of course, then, I, really? no, I, I you clearly, you really clearly I don't want to be fired by you. It's, um, it's not a claim that I, you know, that I, that I want. But, Simon, um, you're the only one I haven't asked yet. Why shouldn't I fire you? I think I worked uh, within the team. I think we tried to steer the team in the right direction and try and get around the pitfalls that were evident. But once we discovered that the vacuum cleaner didn't work and we had a, an item that was very difficult to sell, it was quite difficult to rectify the position by remote control. Why do I get the feeling, I don't know what it is, I've never met you before, that, that you were kind of a hiding behind the bushes type of fellow? But time has come now, we're going to move on and one of you is going to go. Andrew, I think you've done a relatively good job in presenting. Um, I can't really fault you on your presentation. It was OK. Peter, I admire the fact that you take the ultimate responsibility for being the team leader. And Simon, I understand that you was up there uh, claiming to be directing. I feel that, that, that you may have kind of stitched up your team leader. But, Peter, I've got to say this, that, that you were poor. You were very, very bad at presenting. So, you know, it's a sad thing. But my final decision is, Simon, you're fired. Eight candidates, no job, one loser.